Well, doctor, can you just talk about what gluten is? I think we hear a lot about gluten sensitivity, but what is it exactly? Yes, of course. Gluten is a protein in many different grains. Think of a protein like a brick wall. Um, digestion is breaking, taking the mortar off the bricks, and each brick is an amino acid. Proteins are made up of amino acids. So to digest protein, we have to take the mortar off the brick wall so you have each individual brick. The problem with celiac disease and non-celiac gluten sensitivity is that we can't get the mortar off the brick. So instead of having one brick that gets absorbed into the bloodstream, which is how it's supposed to be, maybe two bricks, that's called a dipeptide, what happens in both celiac disease and non-celiac gluten sensitivity is if someone took a sledgehammer and broke the wall into a bunch of clumps or pieces, you've got a 33 brick clump, a 17 brick clump, a 21 brick clump. So you get these big clumps going into your bloodstream. And when they get into your bloodstream, the brain says, wait, well, what's this? This is not good for me. I can't use this to build new muscle or new nerve hormones called neurotransmitters. I better fight this. And then your body, your brain tells the immune system, oh, immune system, take care of this. And the immune system makes antibodies to fight that clump, which is called a peptide. So we make antibodies to many different peptides of gluten and then the immune system takes over and then come many different symptoms. Why has this become a problem? Has it always been an issue for some people or are we just hearing about it more I think in the last 10 to 20 years? Is it a reason for that? Or? Yes, there is. Uh, Two-fold answer. One, it's always been a problem to some degree. In the last 50 years it's called the 50-50 rule mm -hmm. that the gluten content of wheat has gone up by over 50%. Mm -hmm. And gluten means glue. So you have more glue in the wheat. Why? Because when you bake and you stretch, you know, when you bake, um, the dough rises, so you're stretching it, and the more glue there is, the better it sticks together. Mm -hmm. The result is you've got lighter breads, lighter cupcakes, mm -hmm. things like that. So commercially, it's much better to have more gluten in a product. But the protein structure has changed as a result of having so much more gluten, and the digestive system can't break it down. So in the last 50 years, it's become quite a problem. Uh, that's the first answer. The second answer is that it's actually becoming more prevalent, not just because of the gluten content in wheat, but also because of what's called a lack of oral tolerance. When we take foods into our digestive system, the immune system in the gut has to say, this is a friend, this is a foe, oh, this is a piece of celery, this is good for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a bacteria, this is not good for you. Why is it that at a um, picnic, only five people out of 20 that eat the potato salad get sick? It's because the immune system in the gut is unable to take care of, for those five people, it's unable to take care of the bacteria that's grown in the potato salad. Mm -hmm. For the others, it says, oh, this is a problem, take care of it. So what's happened in the last um, three decades, actually, since 1974, uh, is that the um, oral tolerance, our ability to differentiate between what's good for us and what's bad for us, has gotten much more sensitive. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the increased number of toxins that we're exposed to in our environment. We have, we're, we're overwhelmed. We're mm -hmm. overwhelmed by the amount of toxins in our water, in the air, in all of the food. You know, they spray antibiotics on our vegetables now. I mean, it's just a mess. Our mm -hmm. food supply is a mess. Do we have any idea what percentage of the population may have a gluten sensitivity? Yes. Uh, um, in terms of celiac disease, the consensus is it's about one out of 100, mm -hmm. uh, one out of 103. Some studies have said one out of 85 to 90. So it's around one out of 100 ballpark. In terms of non-celiac gluten sensitivity, because it's such a new kid on the block in terms of being identified, there are nowhere near as many studies. Mm -hmm. The studies that have come out have said anywhere from one out of six to, no, excuse me, 6%, which is six out of 100, to one out of 20, uh, which is uh, about 5%. So it's somewhere five, six percent so far that the studies are saying. Okay. But new testing has come out in the last three years it's much more sensitive testing, and it's showing to be somewhere around 30 to 40 percent of the people that doctors are doing the tests on, meaning there's some reason to do the test, they're not well, about 30 to 40 percent of them are coming back positive to antibodies to different clumps of brick, different peptides mm -hmm. of gluten.